distinguished guests. I'm very happy to be able to take part in this joyous occasion, the 50 year anniversary of the establishment of the International Association of Jewish Lawyers and Jurists, and to see here so many friends and distinguished guests. The International Association is personally dear to me. Just a mere few years ago, or at least I prefer to think it was a few years ago, when I was a young attorney, Judge Adassa Benito, Zichrona Livracha, who was the president of the International Association at the time, appointed me to be the association's representative at the United Nations. Ever since then, I've had a, a warm place in my heart for the International Association. The International Association was founded by th three esteemed jurists whose contribution to human rights is unequivocal. Israeli Supreme Court Justice Chaim Cohen, US Supreme Court Justice Arthur Goldberg, and Nobel Peace Prize laureate René Cassin. These three jurists made it their life's mission to promote human rights and had a shared vision to establish an association of Jewish jurists for this purpose. The past 50 years represent the realization of their vision. Over the years, I had the honor of working with four international association presidents, three of whom are present here today. Hadassah Benito, that is not uh, with us unfortunately, Alex Hartman, Irit Kahn, and now with Mayor Linzen. I can say from first-hand knowledge that it is a wonderful association, well known for its professional qualities and one that has enjoyed continuous international recognition. The International Association's status as an international NGO is especially telling. It is accredited with the United Nations and has the right to appear before United Nations bodies. For the past 50 years, the International Association has been at the forefront of the fight for the promotion of human rights, both in Israel and abroad. Naturally, an association of Jewish jurists would focus on issues of interest to the Jewish people. Yet, one of the defining factors of the International Association is that it doesn't limit itself to these issues. Instead, choosing to advocate for rights as a whole. For example, and Mayor spoke about uh, the Rohingya, the association has worked to protect civilians in Syria and other conflict areas from genocide and violations of human rights. This is commendable. The Israeli government follows the association's work with great appreciation. Just as an example, after Operation Protective Edge, the association made extensive efforts to bring the voices and stories of the residents of Southern Israel before the Commission of Inquiry established by the United Nations Human Rights Committee. In addition, in 2009, the International Association submitted to the former Chief Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court an excellent expert opinion the opinion stating that the court lacked jurisdiction concerning the Israeli-Palestinian conflict was in line with the Israeli legal position on this matter. Israel shares the International Association's values on human rights. Israel is committed to the continuing promotion of human rights and to its obligations under human rights treaties. Human rights are at the core of our value system as Israelis, as lawyers, and as Jews. And on behalf of the Israeli government, I can say that we truly appreciate the International Association's work as an ally of the State of Israel in this regard. The International Association has been especially vital to the battle against anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. We cannot allow the passage of time to lull us into complacency. Anti-Semitism is ever prevalent in our world today as extreme voices gain more and more traction. This fact makes the International Association's work even more crucial. I recently watched one of the Association's excellent videos where the Association rightfully makes the connection 
between the promotion of human rights and the rule of law. Along these lines, allow me to end with a quote by one of the association founders, Supreme Court Justice Chaim Cohen. The rule of law leans on three pillars. The state's subordination to the law, the independence of the judges and their power of coercion, and the sanctity of the life and liberty of the individual. All three, as one, are clear signs of justice. And indeed, the rule of law does not exist but to restore justice. I would like to again thank the organizer for this, on organizers for this wonderful opportunity, and I wish us all an enriching conference. Thank you very much.